Hangout. We're going to take a little time and talk about QR codes. We have a lot of special guests with us, and um, we'd like for each one to introduce themselves and give a, a brief spill of who they are. But first, I'm Tom Holder. I work at I'm, I'm with Augie and the Board of Directors, and, we, and our goal is to try to communicate to the marine industry and try to develop a community where we can all share together in common goals in marine industries. So if um, I guess we start with, uh, maybe we can start with Darren and have him uh, give a spill on himself and go through each one. Uh, I think Darren's having a little uh, difficulty. Right. How about, about Dennis? Yeah, I'll start off. <laughs> so my name is Dennis Mori. I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at uh, SSI. Um, I think, uh, as Tommy was talking about, the, the, the Augie Marine is something that uh, SSI is 100% behind, um, with the ultimate goal uh, just trying to improve how information and the marine industry, so nothing really specific about ship constructor or, or any of SSI products, but really just to help the marine industry to be built and be more efficient. So, um, And this is one of the first things that we're trying to do on trying to do a hangout so we can share some information and get some best practices and and just learn from each other. Right. That's awesome. What do you think, Josh? you want to introduce yourself there? Sure. I'm the uh, training coordinator here at SSI. So I've been messing around a little bit with QR codes and some of our training materials, and uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to hearing what uh, what everybody's got for a take on how this works in the shipbuilding industry. I think it's got a lot of potential. Sure. Mark. Mark Waldy with SSI as well, um, PR coordinator here at the company. Um, you know, Aug. Most of our uh, ship constructor, well, all of our ship constructor users are actually Autodesk users as well, because ship constructor is built on top of uh, um, Autodesk uh, products. So, um, you know, all of our users can can uh, benefit this, and uh, Augie Marine can obviously benefit um, everyone who uses Autodesk uh, products and um, is in the marine industry. Cool. About you, Michael. Thanks, Tommy. Yeah, my name is Michael Viella. I'm the sales and marketing manager at SSI. Um, I'm keen to to kind of just explore what new platforms and you know uh, ways of communicating um, can bring to the table. This this is a Google Hangout. Uh, it's our first real exposure to it. Um, apparently, there's all kinds of functionality that we're going to be able to share screens and it's like an informal little webinar. And uh, we're recording it, so as we, you know, produce content and hopefully content with value, we can then put it up on different platforms. Uh, somebody can review it, look at some of the links, some of the, you know, different uh, information that's provided through screen sharing, and then, uh, and then that can be maybe sort of a starting point for another further conversation, um, even if it's just a forum type conversation um, within Augie. At least you have something like this Google Hangout to review beforehand, so you can say, "Oh, that's what they're talking about. Uh, that was interesting, what Dennis said, and so on." And you can just you you wouldn't really record it and be part of the Hangout after that, but you would be able to say, "I watched it, and now I want to you know throw in my two cents." So it's all new to us, and it's um, I, I'm just really keen to see how we can leverage you know these different platforms and uh, be more effective communicators. Sure. Well, um, I think we have a coordinator. We'd like to introduce uh, Allison, if she would have to speak, share with she with us. Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm the social media coordinator coordinator here at SSI, and I'll just be here if you have any questions, you need any links. I would just send any information my way. Sounds good. Um, like I said, I'm Tom Holder. I actually with the Augie Board of Directors, but I work in shipbuilding with Huntington Ingalls, and we're um, been using the AutoCAD product uh, in the, since the 90s. We've uh, actually come through and had time to um, go through several um, uh, 3D systems. We've uh, started using uh, the um, the ship constructor in 2005, 
and moving forward and, and to reach release and, and getting on board. But the interest it, that I have in the subject, we have the, the QR code readers. Um, we also are looking at um, what we've done with the barcodes. And at present, of course, we have a lot of barcode situation going on. And very interested in how the QR codes can improve our our um, our lifecycle management and interface with the uh, with the shop in and, and engineering. So, if um, there's so much out on the web right now on this new subject, and if any of us were to really look closely, we sitting if we're sitting in a restaurant and, and an advertisement card at, at the table, you'll see that that establishment has QR codes which gives you information. It can also give you access to uh, benefits they offer. So there's not a whole lot that we can't do. I do know that uh, the barcodes are are um, are one directional and uh, the QR codes are bi-directional which can contain more information. But um, I would like um, maybe if uh, Dennis could share with us um, the, the insight that they have for use in, in, uh, in the marine industry um, tying in with uh, applications through Autodesk and of course with the, uh, with the ship constructor and, and I, I keep mentioning ship constructor because in, in the Autodesk world that is the only software that um, actually runs on top of uh, the Autodesk product and, and provides a means of a total package scenario for development from the beginning of uh, the study to a finished product. So. Um, Dennis, could you share with us uh, your insights of QR coding? Yeah, I, I, I totally can. I, and I kind of want to, you know, just on one of the comments you kind of mentioned about uh, using QR codes for marketing. And it was one of those things I was, uh, I think it was about two years, I think I went to Mike's office and I was telling him that, you know, QR codes are a, a dying technology that, you know, that we tried it, just didn't, didn't really work. There wasn't very much use for it. And actually, the turning point for me, which kind of uh, stirred all this interest in it, was that Google was doing some research with uh, QR codes. And the idea of the QR code was instead of logging into the system with your credentials, so your username or password, that you would already have a phone that would be authenticated, and you would just simply scan the QR code, and it would now be your authentication. So you wouldn't even have to enter your... your username or password, it would know exactly who you are. So just seeing how easy that was to implement and to use, it kind of really stirred a lot of ideas of how that can actually be used in the shipbuilding industry. And I think the whole idea of where I think the value starts coming from the QR codes is that, one, it is a very well-known and simple technology. So it's been used in, in Toyota for I, I don't even know how, how long. I think it was actually invented in, in Toyota. But the whole idea of actually being able to implement it with your current processes to either initiate some activities or to access information in a uh, shipbuilding perspective makes it very easy and very um, possible to implement or have anyone to implement. So some of the use cases that we kind of see is that a lot of times, you know, shipbuilding is very traditional. So we deal with 2D drawings, documentation quite often. and But in the back end, we have all this very rich data. We have this 3D product model that um, has a lot more information than just the 2D drawings that we usually get. So when we're kind of starting to really think about how we can have a better way of accessing that information, um, that you'll be able to now add QR codes to this documentation that you have on the shop floor and simply have your uh, the people on the waterfront to be able to scan it and access that 3D information. So it, it kind of starts bridging the gap between the traditional 2D workflow that you already have, that most of our clients have, that's really widespread in the shipbuilding industry, but really have a way to access that rich 3D information and, and brings a whole new uh, level of opportunity to bring data back, to, to communicate more information, um, to understand what you're actually building so you can get a 3D representation. Uh, it allows for a new workforce coming in when they have, they have less ability to read these 2D drawings and they can read the 3D drawings a lot easier so it uh, allows a good transition to that. So 
having QR codes just to transition and, and to bridge the gap between those, I, we see a, a lot of value in that. And we actually see customers actually doing it. Uh, so we have customers in, in South America uh, doing the, exactly that in essence. Uh, also, we have ways of just uh, querying information. So, uh, and this again goes in South America where they have a QR code that is printed on um, a production package. And simply all it really does is that you would scan it and it would just tell you if that drawing is the latest version. Because one problem that we have in our industry, kind of surprising, is that you have all these revisions of these documents and by the time you get it printed and get them to the shop floor, it takes a lot of time and a lot of times you're not printing or you're not looking at the latest version. So just having a, an easy way for someone on the shop floor to scan this QR code and to know if what they're looking at and what they're going to build is the latest drawing adds, again, a lot of value. You're not making errors in, in uh, building what you should be building. And the last kind of area where, where we see where the QR codes is going to add a lot of value, and you kind of mentioned it there, Tommy, is actually uh, passing information back. And there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Uh, most people look at QR codes and they, th they think of marketing on websites. And that's exactly how I looked at it about three years ago. But the QR codes, you can encode way more information and they have like standards that you can that can't be the barcode. So for example, our internal boardroom, if you come and you want to connect to the wireless, you can scan this with the barcode and it would automatically sign you up to uh, the wireless. So it's not a UR link, it's actually some activity. Um, and the way that we see that in the shipbuilding industry is that you can actually pass information back when you're completed a task. So for example, if you're looking at, um, you know, you're, you're, if you're a welder and you're doing welding, and you actually want to say that you're completed uh, that welding package, you can actually um, you can actually scan that QR code, uh, and they'll say that you're actually complete. So you're actually passing information back. And then again, there's a, a lot of other information I have too. But the cool thing that I actually just got today actually was from Josh um, on how they're using it not just on the building. In construction of a ship, which is there's many use cases, but I know this one was actually on um, the ships already built. So when you're looking at one of these ships that have um, 3,000 compartments over 12 decks, navigating through it for a new employee is quite uh, quite cumbersome. And I don't know if you want to talk about it, Josh, but it was kind of interesting in how they're using QR codes for that as well, so for training and, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's one of the things that's been interesting for me when I've been looking at the QR codes is how it could fit with training that we're looking at offering and just how it's being used not just for marketing but in real world situations. And the thing I like is that it gives you the information that you want on demand. You've got the phone in your pocket, you can scan the code and it can connect you to audio, uh, video, take you to a website that's got the information that you need or a manual. Um, so in the article that I was sharing with you there, uh, they're using it to help uh, crew and, and people navigate, find the most efficient path. Um, but you could easily use it for informational purposes for, for other people on the on the ship as well. So I think the potential for the QR code is, is pretty huge. Yeah, you know, this, you know, this is this is Tom. This is a real interesting thing. Um, I was thinking about this, and I don't want to change the subject, which I'm trying not to do. But aboard ship. Um, we have we have a need to have access to compartment information. You have to validate equipment. You have to be able to have an, uh, exit information from from the compartments. Um, for example, they usually have um, label plating and, and schematics and stuff. Well, yeah. you know, if these guys had had something that they could scan aboard the ship, the crew members would have quick access to. Um, manuals like you said for uh, problem solving or, or working equipment. Uh, I know that there's a there's always a set of uh, drawings given that goes along with the when the ship's just delivered and it's usually on a CD. Well if it's if it's done through a QR situation or whatever this it's a quick access. So I was um, 
that's one idea I was thinking about was through you know compartment and access information for damage control and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, the other part, when when Dennis was speaking, I was thinking I was thinking about um, laser scanning for completion. If if it was you know if you go to a steel yard, you see all kind of writings all over the steel. You see numbers and so forth. If there was, I don't know if it's that technology is there, but if you were able to um, scan or paint something onto the steel that was a uh, QR code big enough to be read, they could actually go by with a, um, not an inventory device, but a, a, a reading device that would actually take a tally of what that piece is, where it is, where it belongs, and yeah. so forth, and, and give an immediate feedback to um, to the people that purchase, you know, material and so forth, and planning people. So based on somebody just going through scanning information, so yeah, um, we kind of looked at that. The whole thing is that the the scanning of the QR codes on, on these devices or on these steel structures is very, we'll say, complex, and you start getting the same type of issues that you had with marketing of laser scans. Um, and that's kind of where I was kind of going with uh, if you have the production drawing because it, you're, you're an assembly. All, those guys have a production package. That's pretty much what they work with. And if you have a QR code which actually just says that I'm done that package, then that information will get shot back to your ERP system saying, "Okay, hey, this package is complete." Um, you know, you, you start making it a, a little bit easier because the whole thing is, yeah, I think printing on uh, those, you know, the assemblies and all that. I think that's that extreme. Might be a yeah, it's a little extreme, but it's just an idea. Yeah, no, I, th I think it's a good idea. Just, and I, I'm. I'm Open to, to to ideas here. I just think it be. I think it would be difficult. And the whole thing is like, how it long? It may be counterproductive as well. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say the cool thing with the QR codes, though, they scale to whatever size you want, and they've got that built-in redundancy, which you don't get from a barcode. So you know they do have potential in an environment where they're going to get scratched or banged up to keep being readable. But it's just applying it to the uh, to the steel that would be the challenging part. Yeah, I, finishing and all that stuff. Yeah. Is, I don't know. I think it'd be quite difficult for that to to work. Yeah. Gotcha. So uh, on, on that note, and this is this is Darren Larkins, the CEO of SSI. I was having a few technical difficulties, but I think I'm uh, in the room now. Um, you know, talking about the shipyard environment, and, and I think tying it all together, Dennis mentioned that our, our industry is, is very conservative, and, and Josh, when you were talking about, you know, just pulling the phone out of your pocket, um, I think one of the things people are going to come across when, you know, dealing with, trying to implement these sort of things, because in, yeah. the, in the South American case, it was very much bottom-up driven, it was driven by the users, and, they, you know, they were trying to solve a technical challenge, but... You know, being a conservative industry, that whole bring your own device, implement, you know, whatever you want to implement, use, you know, your own device in a shipyard environment, I think that's going to be one of the challenges that, that we see is the, the willingness for management to buy into this because, you know, to start tying it back, as Dennis was saying, you know, I finished this spool and I'm going to scan a code on a drawing or I've, you know, taken out of inventory the pieces from a spool or a piece of equipment. You kind of need, you know, an organizational buy-in to that. And so I, you know, I, I don't know if anyone has any comments on that, yeah. but I think that's going to be a challenge that needs to be needs to be overcome. Yeah, I have a comment on that. I'm not sure if that. I don't think it'll be that much of a challenge. And the only reason is because right now there is a lot of people that are already using kind of barcodes for for those kind of things, and they have to have a whole new device for it. You have to have, um, you know, the barcoding system or whatever, and you usually buy the software. Yeah. So the, even the implementation of you know, and I don't know how it would be if it would be iPads, if it would be phones that are not connected to cellular, but it's just, you know, you have all the software and have some internal wireless, which I think is probably would be an issue now thinking about it on some cards. But I'm not sure how much more of a challenge it would be than it is today with barcodes. I, yeah, I guess it's a, it's a lower bar, but in, in all those cases of barcoding system, it required that organizational buy-in. And some of yeah. the beauty of this sort of technology is the ability to just throw it on a drawing, pull your phone out, download an app, and, and you know scan, yeah. the, scan the code, get the information. Whereas you know that sort of, as a replacement to barcoding systems, it still requires that sort of organizational buy-in. And Tommy, you work at, you, at Ingalls, a very large organization with that sort of 
you know, that sort of, I don't want to call it bureaucracy, but systems in place. And I don't know if you have any thoughts around being able to pull your phone out and start scanning codes on the shop floor um, and that sort of thing. Well, what they, actually, they, they will provide whatever tools that, that are needed to going through to make things happen. And there are things that they are doing right now in, in cable runs and the cable links and and they're being marked so I can say there's some devices handheld devices that are being used to keep up with that and tie it back to our drawings and so forth and it helps them um, and it does a whole lot for the handheld devices get them information very quickly and um, so but that stuff has to be labeled for it to even be used so if um, if we're um, if we were to even label um, uh, wiring then we should be able to label pretty much anything and have it come up to where it's, it's tied back in to, uh, to a system to a drawing to uh, information available but uh, the main thing is, is you know when you're when you're pulling cable there's so much of it and there's, there's stuff that's just everywhere and you have to be able to keep up with it the correct links and what system it goes with and so forth, how it pulls through and penetrates and and everything. So I would think it would definitely apply to other systems, but that's basically where, that I know of, we've actually started some with a connection between uh, the drawings and, and, and the craft. is um, handheld devices, it's reading cables. So, You know, what was the, the driver? Because I, I see the... The driver of the, using the barcodes for the cabling, for example, would be similar to the driver of, you know, people wanting to do the QR codes on drawings, for example. And so, I was just like, is is the driver was it cost? Was it uh, uh, improving product uh, productivity? Is it just you know just general in the case of like, well, there's so, a lot of times in the project we're at the end of the project and we don't have the right cables and going in and, and adding them are too expensive. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of curious of. Of where the the reasoning being because that'd be probably be similar to again QR codes for the implementation. Yeah, it's, it's very very it's accurate. It's you know it's in the early stages, but it's been going on for a while and can go into it too much. But they're you know they're they're utilizing it's being used and um, everything has birthing pains. But they're um, it's actually uh, providing more accuracy and giving things back to the engineers and um, with the people that are pulling the cable and of course with material and, and so forth and, and especially the planning um, they can actually come up and um, keep up where things are and so if it's if it's in the handheld device and they scan it they know exactly where it is and how long it is and what system it goes to so um, but I know that uh, when I brought up I did make suggestions in the company to uh, utilize uh, in, jump in and utilize uh, the QR codes and, and and so forth and I was replied back through them that they've already uh, have in production something that's being looked at to implement uh, barcode and uh, QR codes but um, further than that they didn't elaborate so but I do know we have implemented handheld devices that read cables and so um, they were having a problem with markings I believe and where cables actually went so, but I was thinking, you know, uh, if we, if we had something on 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 systems, I mean, we do color coding on everything, and and I know that those um, systems for for piping is is color coded, and um, so I'm just wondering again. You know, my idea was, you know, if if we if we put it on our drawings, that's definitely a, a plus. If the sketches go to the shop, that's and it has the coding on it. That's definitely a plus. Um, the when you go through revisions and change paper, um, and give you get a stack of change paper. It's hard to keep up with um, who's got the latest and when and where. Yeah. If it's stamped with approval, that you know that stamp of approval could be a QR code mm -hmm. that actually gives them um, authority to say this is the real McCoy. Of course. Um, um, and I'm just curious of um, if if we actually implement it into our software, um, the ability to tag things. Because I mean, we have tags on our on our um, on our piping systems and and tie in through your software already. If those things actually had informational tagging that would 
be tagged to the um, various systems, and it could actually be just carry through um, all the way through to the to the yard. So um, other than just stamping a package, um, that information is all there. It's in the database. Um, uh, things could be decided through the engineering what they want to put in that QR code. Mm -hmm. If you would, extreme attributes um, information. And it all ties together through the um, through the cycle, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, you guys have come a long way in a short period of time, and developed some stuff that um, other people just haven't done. Mm -hmm. um, so, and for it to stand alone, I'm just wondering, uh, what do you, what do you see in the industry? Is this something that's just a, a trial thing, or is it something you see be very productive? Um, something you can sell that um, would actually enhance um, life cycle management and I think I think the I, I don't think it's going to be a phase I think it's one of those technologies been here for a round and it just hasn't been leveraged in the shipbuilding industry again like if you look at, at Toyota they, they they invented again I believe that they're the ones that invented QR codes and they've been using it for for many different uh, reasons in, for many different years. So I do think it's something that is going to be uh, used more often in the shipbuilding industry. Uh, and I think I kind of mentioned this in, in our, um, on the Augie forum. And, and the reason being it really is because it's, it's so easy to use. Like it's, it's easy to use, uh, easy to implement, and you can use it pretty much right away with no investment. Um, and it's really, I think that's the reason why people are going to be implementing, implementing it a lot more. Especially when you go with this, the PLM and ERP systems, when there's more integration, like the, the the challenge that you just had there, where you said that you're getting all these revisions and they're all approved, and you don't know which one's the latest one. This is the exact same problem um, that one of our clients uh, in Brazil that um, uh, solved pretty much. And again, all it really did is that they had a QR code on the drawing and person on the shop floor just had to like scan this QR code and it would simply say is it up to date or is it out of date right and, you know from the person on the floor you know it's very simple for them to do it's very easy they don't there's not very much uh, disruption in their workflow but if you think of what's actually happening in the background what's happening in the background they're figuring out okay well which drawing is it is it actually the latest one or it isn't so there's probably a kind of a PLM PDM, document management, um, ERP, or any kind of system that kind of manages those work packages and knows that now that one that that person scanned is not the latest one. So give them an, a big X kind of thing. So that kind of implementation and that workflow with those PLM and ERP systems I can see being very useful. Um, and that's similar to some of the stuff that we're kind of uh, looking at right now. So there's many different ways of implementing it such as um, if you go through your PLM system, ERP system, or if you go right to Ship Constructor because these queries that we're, we're asking now or soon with our enterprise platform can be accessed straight to Ship Constructor or be queried uh, through Ship Constructor so um, which is going to open the possibilities of you know having users to implement them even easier than they do already. Right. But, uh, they yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I and I was I was just kind of always curious of like when I was I was talking to you, I think it was Michael before about this QR codes and and you kind of alluded to that question about the future and the and the QR codes and I, I don't know if I struggle with this, but I always wonder in the case that you know with you know RF tags being so much get the price going down and them being being added to more stuff so more equipment are going to be added to them and and you know if they're going to be even small enough and cheap enough to embed in in steel for example that now you know you have all you have all that logistics now in a different type of technology but I don't know where that's going kind of, kind of going and I can see that in, in the future in you know 5, 10, 15 years probably um, that would be something that a technology that might be replacing a little bit of the QR codes but Again, the QR codes, I think the best is the transition between, you know, the 2D world that's very traditional in the shipbuilding industry to, you know, a, the very information-centric world we actually live in. So, again, ERP, PLM, 
but even ship constructor, your 3D model. So I think mm -hmm. it's a good way to transition uh, information uh, between the two. And like this goes outside the, the modeling and production. It goes into, like how Josh was saying, like uh, navigation of it, where you go, but your manuals, if you have an equipment, if you if you start having your, um, if you do maintenance on your objects that, you know, if you have a QR code on your equipment, you can scan it and it would automatically get you the service manual or even better yet, it gets, it gets you service uh, record. the production information of that area. So you can actually recreate that so you don't have to, you know, go through this whole, you know, process of trying to find out what is being modeled and how to uh, modify it and stuff that you can get access to that information quickly. So there's there's a lot of possibilities of, you know, you, you have something, now you want to access complementary information. There's, there's many use cases, which mm -hmm. I don't even think I have a good handle of how many there are. Well, I got, I got a question that goes along with this, and um, I'd like to ask Josh this question and see what he has to say about it. But with QR codes and barcodes and RFIDs, what do we think the security problems will have? Do you see some security issues that companies may face where a lot of data is placed in the QR code? Is there something that possibly can be done where it's protected? I think because the QR code, just it's just a pointer. It's just a link to information that already exists. If you've got a secured... Wi-Fi network, um, your your QR code connectivity is as secure as your network is. I got you. So if you've got uh, a Wi-Fi network that can be easily hacked or, or eavesdropped on, anything that, that happens on that network doesn't have to be a QR code, but anything's going to be vulnerable. Yeah, so if you're in, inside your firewall and your network is strong and everything's protected, yeah. then it should not be an issue. Shouldn't be because all the all the QR code does is just point you in the direction of where the information is. Um, so if you've got that information secured, um, you're you're going to be accessing it securely. So yeah. it just depends on what the yards have got set up for uh, for their Wi-Fi. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, the um, one of the questions we I had on my list to, to for us to open up as a panel discussion was um, the comparison. QR codes, the barcodes, the RFIDs, and then how are they different and how are they the same? Because, um, I mean, there's, they're out there and they're being used because we know RFIDs can uh, can be used in many ways. And the simplest one is we, um, our dog has a tracking device. So, but uh, if anybody wants to take a stab at that, the simplest, the simplest thing is QR codes have a lot more information than uh, barcodes. And secondly, uh, QR codes are sort of consumer level device. And Dennis mentioned that um, you can just uh, people have 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 QR code readers in their smartphones in their pockets. They've already got it. You don't have to buy something special. And um, you, you create a QR code for free. You can get a QR code reader for free. People already have it. It's um, you don't have to invest in something different. I think that's a big, that's a huge, huge benefit of it. But um, I mean, the barcode readers are pretty much applications as well, are they not? Yeah, most of the most QR code readers um, also read barcodes. Well, so that's right. On, on yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, but, people, the, but I think people are more used to used to QR codes. You know, like, yeah, like definitely. Sort of, <laughs> yeah, I think they have they have that um, that new technology. Even though, as Dennis said, they've been used in in many different areas for a long time. I think they have that new car, new technology smell, and <laughs> in that in that people are more open to adopting technologies that are considered to be you know more you know productive, more cost effective, more you know all all of the the good things we like to hear about technology because it's new, because it's a buzz, and people are talking about it. I think you know, QR codes have that for them. I mean, they have other advantages as well, but. I, I think that's You'll see at the um, AU, like last year and this year, all the vendors will have something there with QR codes on it too that you can scan and get their information. And also for even throughout the whole event, you'll have found uh, big QR codes for information. So um, the technology is there. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a good way to provide somebody that has a device to scan it. And uh, I noticed in some of the presentations last year, and I think... Um, 
it was either um, Lynn or uh, Robert Green had some or somebody had up there a big huge screen of it. You scan it, you got all the information you need to know about the lecture. So, um, well, Dennis, is, you know, he's had uh, at the end of his presentations a QR code in the final slide, so people in the audience can actually take a picture with their with their phone, not right. take a picture, but scan the QR code with their QR scanner with the phone and then get all of his contact information including what blogs he has and what his Twitter handle is and things like that. It's, yep. I mean yep. that's pretty slick, you know, otherwise people are scrambling for a for a pencil and a paper and trying to gather that information. Exactly. Just sort of immediately downloading it straight in and having access to it. So if we're talking about all these um, you know these great use cases for QR codes in the shipbuilding industry and you know as and Dennis said Toyota has been using them for a long time. Marketers have been using them for a long time. They're everywhere. They're on every every mobile device and so on. Um, and I have some thoughts behind this. But the question that comes to mind is why haven't we seen more implementation and adoption of these technologies in the shipbuilding industry? Because you know uh, the question around what 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 the, what does the future hold? What technologies is going to is going to be adopted? RFIDs? You know are they going to become more prevalent? Prevalent? It, you know, it almost begs the question, are we going to even have implemented QR codes in the shipbuilding industry by the time whatever new technology comes around? I mean, the pace of technological change being what it is today and shipbuilding industry being what it is, are we, you know, are, are we chasing, is it like a dog chasing its tail around in a circle as new technologies come out? And, and that, that, I think that's a valid question when you look at small shipyards, not necessarily, except for the very innovative ones, and don't get me wrong, there are innovative shipyards out there. Um, but some of them are less um, open to implementing things that have a perceived cost, even if even if it's pulling a phone out of your pocket. Um, and large shipyards tend to have more bureaucracy and controls, and therefore it needs to be a bigger implementation. Are we, you know, is, are are those some of the reasons we're not seeing the implementation, you know, of, of these sorts of technologies? Is you know, it seems pretty easy, it seems beneficial. Uh, you know, where's the where's the use case? Where's the examples? And that's a question. I, I somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah, that's that's very true. And 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 a company my side, it's size. It comes into a need to know basis, and then usually we find out um, when it's brought up as a study and a test and a test and trial environment for for that software and engineering. But um, I know it's being studied, and and to be honest with you, because of our situation with our our customer, a lot of things have to be held. held Strictly to confidential and security measures, and to have a cloud environment within our own environment, it has to meet certain rules. And so, um, that security part of it is plays a big part in in what what we do, and uh, we have to justify, improve, and have the value of it sold as well. So, but it, there's a um, there's another question that I had. In uh, uh, aftermarket uh, of of the ship, if uh, if we were to utilize um, the features of UR co QR coding, in the aftermarket, um, I mentioned a little bit about it earlier. But do, do you guys think of any way that um, these things can be used on a ship as it travels around the globe and assisting? Uh, the crew, the captain, um, interfacing with engineers, um, while they're at sea, um, type thing, um, you know, aftermarket might, type things. Might be handy in a war zone, you know, if soldiers had a QR code on the top of their helmet so that uh, so that the satellite imagery could uh, tell who's the enemy and who isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could have that on ships and everything. Well, one of the uh, you know, draw, draw like real red circles for the enemies and blue yeah. circles. For the enemy. It's like a little game. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think Darren sort of brings up a question, which probably is a subject for another hangout. But it's the rate of change uh, of innovation and introduction of innovation, and how much, based on just sort of the natural tendencies, and you just outlined a lot of them, Tommy. Of, um, you know testing things and you know really putting it through an approval process and that sort of thing how much is going to just come and go um, that some industries just won't be able to take advantage of given those realities they're just they're not going to just be early adopters too much risk involved um, but you know I don't know that QR codes fall into that category Darren Dennis was pointing out they've been around a long time I think they've you know 
the proving a value. Adoption is another question, but they're they're proving a, a value in certain specific areas. So they're just you know I'm just not sure it's as broad as it could be. I think that's yeah. I think I think some of the problem, and I, I wonder you know if I look at myself and, and I I almost threw QR codes as a dying technology. And if I kind of look at why, and it's just you know, it's not until I, I realized, you know, and I did a little bit of research that I found, you know, it was invented by Toyota, Toyota and they've been using it for that long. That, but when I when I didn't know that, I kind of thought of it as marketing. Okay, I have a QR code, it gives me to a website, that's what it does. I didn't really put the two and two together that the QR code can be so much more. And, you know, to, to kind of go to Darren's point, I think the, the thing is that I think the the way that ship building ship builders implement technologies slower than the market but it's still increasing and I think the whole idea is that when you start looking at some of the the new um, software that's going out there and so if you you might have the two extremes but if you kind of look at, at, the, at the at the you know the mid tier which is might be considered maybe 50 percent of the market or whatever um, is that there's a lot of more modern applications now having what we call REST APIs. And what this allows to do is, just to, uh, to simplify it, is that now that QR code can now access and do stuff that an application can. So you can actually access any information you want by using a URL. Uh, but it does a lot more. So it's, again, by the same token, that if I want to know uh, when I'm done my a certain task, I just have to scan the QR code. Nothing else has to happen, and that will trigger everything in the software. So there's quite a bit of benefit that you actually have now. So if you, who implements it, if it's the reason for production, if it's a reason for um, more management, PLM, ERP systems, uh, I think it does have the potential. But I think one of the bigger issues, and again, I, I think it's just awareness. Like, I, I'm not sure how I could have overlooked this. And if, and I'm not, you know, I am who I am, but I'm just kind of interested of in how many people don't have it. Because, like, every time we do the presentations on QR codes and what you can do, everyone's like, wow, this is, I, they always want to find more information. Yeah. And that kind of, le again, leads me to believe that there's just more of a lack of information or just you didn't really realize what the potential it was there for. Yeah, awareness is critical, I think, in that, in that way. Even talk, Michael was talking about risk and so on, and Dennis was looking at, tech, at QR codes kind of as a passe technology, a dying technology, where I think most shipbuilders still think of it as a very brand new technology, and, and therefore it has that risk associated with it. So that awareness, I think, is critical even from that perspective. To, to you know, It has a long life cycle. It's been used in many different ways. It's been used for very much the same things in other industries. All of that awareness about that is, I think, critical for that adoption because it's not risky technology, but it's perceived as that because it's considered to be new technology when it's not even new technology. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about it because it's new to you, as in you know, fairly new in the shipbuilding industry, but it's not you know, it's not by any means new technology. You know, maybe this is a different, and I'm going to direct this to Tommy, because, you know, you work in shipyards, you've been doing it a long time, um, and I, I think maybe something falls between the chairs here. Um, Dennis says, you know, when we do presentations, people say, oh, cool, you know, that, that's great. Um, and there's some spark of interest, but who in the shipyard, and or how in the shipyard, when something new comes along like that, is there anybody... You know, or is there any sort of typical workflow or person who introduces the idea of this to their bosses or whatever? I'm, I'm thinking almost like this will be familiar to everybody else, Tommy, but we talk about the trusted advisors and thought leaders in the industry. And um, that means you have to get out there and say to people, here's what's going on. Here's what's you know, been around for a while or on the horizon and coming down the pipe. Um, and here's how we see it can be used. And I think that has limited effectiveness because we're a vendor, and so you know it, it's kind of it's not the same thing as somebody internally like yourself saying, "I was in a Google Hangout the other day, and there was all this discussion around uh, you know some new technology or even an established technology like QR codes and how they could be used." But I don't think there's anybody whose job it is. Let's call them a technical liaison. So you've got your established industry like a shipbuilding industry. And it's somebody's job within there to, to be looking at what's going on, doing things like what you're doing today, Tommy, and then go back to the bosses and say, 
here's what's you know out there and readily available. Here's some of the use cases it can be implemented as. My work here is done. Do with that what you will, kind of thing, and and introduce. Like, yeah, this um, for a good example. Um, been going to, to uh, AU for since 2004. When I come back to AU, I have to give a report, and uh, some of the subjects that I I uh, report on have been in from uh, the board, of, actually the vice vice presidents and, and uh, directors on subjects that were of interest. And basically what I had brought back was written up and presented to uh, my management and it was reviewed and, and the upper management would decide if they wanted to hear more about it. Mm -hmm. um, suggestions, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the ideas uh, program is tremendous in our shipyard. Uh, people turn in ideas for to improve processes and so forth. So. If there's something that I see, I, I turn in a suggestion, um, which bypasses uh, direct contact with my manager, but uh, he actually sees it along with all the others. So, um, but uh, just to be honest with you, if I come back from a technology show like the Autodesk University, and there's things there that I know in my shop that's not working correctly or the process is not working well, then um, it's my job to present something that's going to save time and money for the company. So that I do that when I come back. If I go to um, one of y'all's shows, um, I do the same thing. So um, it's a reporting process. And when the company spends money on us, we're to report back of new technology and and hopefully some of it's taken. But when you present something in front of a group of of more than five or six, you get different ideas and philosophies, and depending on who carries the weight, whether it's going to go any further. But um, I also try to follow those things up um, by presenting several different ways, uh, different approaches to try to get maybe thinking I didn't present it correctly or whatever. But um, some things have stuck. That's basically what happens, though. And you don't you go so far in those reports as to try to develop some kind of business case, like we'll save this much time on this process over this amount of time for a dollar figure of X, Y, or Z. We have to spark the interest, but yes, they do a benchmark and do a study on that. Um, but actually, that's pretty much handled by a big group other than myself. They they already they know what it costs to do this, and I present uh, what the what the savings would be, and then they'll come up with a dollar amount, and if it's worthwhile. But uh, new technology, that's a whole new, uh, a whole uh, a different area of the company that um, presents those things, you know, that R and D, and so. Um, when I come back from a CAD managers type situation where I want to make sure that um, our product is used 100% fully and not uh, being sidestepped, I'll bring back things that are, uh, other companies have done that successfully and present those to the, to the management. And some of those things don't have to go very high. They go to the managers. So, um, and then a lot of that stuff get implemented. And some of the things, being a CAD manager, that I just implement myself to save them time. So it's, it's different levels. Especially, and that's what I was going to with the, the organizational buy-in earlier, is you know, a single technology is easy and as consumable as it is like QR codes. Then you're talking about secure Wi-Fi networks. You're talking about change in engineering to actually have those included on drawings. You're talking about bring your own device policies from within IT and all these sorts of things. So someone, you know, it has to be, it has to grow, go up and percolate through the food chain and, you know, up the ladder to, to look at the big picture of all these changes, I'd say. Exactly. Well, we've got about uh, 10 minutes left, and I was thinking that um, if I can figure out how to show my share my screen, I'd like to, to get recording on how to access Augie and the forum, the, the uh, Marine Industries Forum, and um, at least um, take a look at what we have. But we, we can do that in the last five minutes, I guess, but I want to try to get that in here as well. What do you all think? I think it would be a good thing to do to introduce everybody to Augie and, and the forum. Yeah, I'm, definitely. I'll get you started on that now. Will you guys finish off your conversation? Sure, okay. 
So does anybody have anything else to add about QR codes? We didn't get to compare the um, uh, the uh, RFI. What is it? The RFIDs. I've, and I've, shared a, I've shared a link um, in the, the group chat that sort of got a, an RFID versus barcode pro and con comparison. Might be uh -huh. worth checking out. Okay. Cool. I was just thinking back too, Tommy, to your comment about how you could add sort of aftermarket value to, uh, like, on a, a vessel that's global. Um, one of the cool things that I've been looking at is connecting audio to QR codes. And if you think about, you know, recording messages or reminders in different languages that maybe the crew speaks that they don't have in common, um, but QR codes provide a really easy way for you to access that those recordings as well. So you could record um, information that needed to be conveyed in different languages as separate QR codes that are marked with that nationality's flag. Um, you know, whoever needs it can scan it with their phone and they get the information in their own language. Uh, it's another way that you can use the codes to sort of bring information to the users when they need it. That's cool. Yeah, I like that there. I mean, I, to do the brainstorming on this is just really unlimited, but I, I, I'm like I'm like y'all. The, the, the industry, I hate to say it, the technology seems to um, exceed where we are in shipbuilding in other areas like AEC. The, the technology, uh, they seem to have more flexibility and they move faster and they get a lot of stuff done with the new technology because they have more room to go into the cloud environment. And um, through their processes, but when it gets off and get when you know, get off in shipbuilding, and all those processes have been in place for years, and yeah. to change something and just it takes an act of Congress to to, <laughs> to actually do some things. But uh, we seem to be behind. It's kind of like us in Mississippi. For those in California are always ten years ahead of us. So mm -hmm. before we get caught up with what they're doing. But anyway, I, I was thinking that uh, so we got about. Eight minutes. We should go, probably go through and and um, look at the website real quick. And um, I'm not sure how to share the screen. You can, part. Give, us a, you can give us a URL in the chat, I think, and we can all click on it. That's one way. Okay. You can go to the top left hand corner, and there's a green sh uh, screen share. Oh, okay. So if I do that, you're going to see my screen. Yeah, you pick the application. So. If you have like one of your browsers open, you can just select that and select a browser, and then let's try it anyway. I've yeah. got it open um, in in another tab here. Let's see here. Does it have to be in this window? Uh, I think it'll open open up another window. So just you just have to select the application, and then it'll just it'll okay. Start. Let's try this. Do I pick the arrow first? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Didn't do that. One second. Pick the green. All right, I've got a. Um, this is share your screen. Oh, and everybody has to have picked Tommy too. I've been, I've been just looking at Dennis for the fun of it, but. Uh, <laughs> you have to, I think okay. you have to pick Tommy in order that, to. Uh, do you see anything? Okay, it's, now I see yeah. you showing us Josh. Yeah, okay, hi. good. Hey, Josh. Josh okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the very top up here, and I'm going to put um, www.augi.com up here, and we'll just take a look-see. And we come up to the Augie webpage, and there's a lot of information on this page. One of the things that my goal has always been under communities is to provide something for Marine. And um, and right now we do not have one, but we're looking for it. But uh, Augie has graciously uh, provided a location for us under manufacturing. Right. But uh, the forum location, we pick forums here. We can actually go over here. You'll see information about all the forums. But over here on the right, under visit Augie forums, you see manufacturing. And that will take us to all the manufacturing forums. And we'll scroll through until we find our location. And we're, they made something for us called Marine Construction. And we'll pick that link. 
and we come up with uh, the actual threads that we have thus far. And uh, we'll look at the one we've discussed today. We've been discussing for a week or so on barcodes and conversations. So we picked that link. And we see the conversation. So this is a location where we can actually, um, through Augie as a marine, marine industry, can share. And we can start threads on any subject, whether it's from... Audit, AutoCAD subjects, Navis work subjects, shipbuilding subjects. We can discuss anything from related to code requirements, writing software or programs. We can share one to the other. And, and uh, with, with the team of SSI being on board to, to share their expertise, we can even come up with ideas of how to utilize their software. And it's, it's, it can be discussed here as well. Mm -hmm. We can also... Um, use links to subjects as long as we don't uh, draw folks away from Augie but we can have links in here that pop up areas that's outside the Augie as long as it stays within this environment so um, we're pretty much open for what we want to do so a discussion of threads for theirs um, does anybody have any questions about getting into Augie one thing's for sure though you have to be an Augie member and um, Augie membership is free and there are different levels of Augie, and some of those have expensive for different uh, level. Each level gives you different um, values of, of service, if you would. Did you, your benefits your benefits will be more, and when you log in that page, it offers all those benefits when you first join. So, anyway, how do I uh, unshare this? Just close the window. Uh, you can go back to the green and just uh, it's just. Unsure. I just I have a couple more things there. And, you know, we talk about SSI and Ship Constructor being part of the Augie Mar Mar uh, Marine Community and forums, but I just also want to mention the the reason why we're participating as is just another participant in the marine industry. It's nothing focused on ship uh, ship constructor ship building. Um, we're there to, to contribute in any way that we can. So even if the question has nothing to do with ship constructor. Just a pure uh, AutoCAD or Autodesk related question. We're there to support. Um, so we're just again just a, another part of the community. Yeah, well, there's a good subject that um, a lot of people have asked, and this would be related to why y'all did certain things. And I want to ask just this one question off subject of QR codes, but um, the reason why you went from drawing environment to a SQL database environment. What was the reason for that? Oh, we only got a minute left. I don't know how to... <laughs> uh, We'll bring this up another time, but you know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting yeah, subject. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think to make it short, the idea of, of just being drawing based, and if you look at shipbuilding and our projects are just so big that we had to break up, or the way that we build ships is that we break up in components and in drawings. But the whole thing is that when you break it up in these components and these drawings, there's still a lot of relationships that have to cross drawings. So, for example, you have a deck, and it has it, it relates to a lot of frames. When you move that deck, a lot of drawings have to change. And when you have that many relationships that have to change, being based on on on, um, on drawings is actually not ideal. And funny enough, you bring this up. There's going to be a, a, probably a blog post talking about exactly that uh, that question, but. In essence, it was really because we were looking forward and we found the restrictions of being a 100% file-based. Uh, so we kind of used the SQL database and merged and leveraged the file-focused uh, AutoCAD to solve the challenges. But it's it's really it was limiting just being purely on files. You know, to expand on that a little bit, I think you know we we've. We, we were one of the earlier technologies in our industry to actually have a database. I mean, even our earliest versions, you know, we were we were drawing focused as in in that that was your main interaction point. But we had the the access database that at least had attribute information for reporting and bills of materials. But as Dennis said, it was that that need to have associations in the product model and to actually have that virtual ship model in the database that made us move to to SQL Server and move that information into the database. Yeah, That's cool. a lot of the supporting, just getting information out. Cause, you know, again, you know, the open architecture that that wasn't an accident decision. We we had 
people wanting to access more information and, and accessing information through uh, DWGs and drawings was just not a viable solution. So it was just we needed a central way of of having that information easily accessible for other purposes. So you, you said there'd be another um, blog on this subject coming up. Yeah. When would that be? Uh, probably not this week, but next week. <laughs> okay. All right. Look, oh, we're gonna have to wrap this up, but um. We want to pick a time um, when we will do this again. Do we publicize this now, or do we put actually send out as well the Augie Blast and uh, advertise this production and future production, or how do we want to do that? Ideas? When we do this again? Uh, Allison, do you have any ideas, or? Uh, sure. Well, hopefully, we'll be doing it soon. If this time works great for everyone, we may go on with this time. But I heard a little bit of feedback that it is inconvenient to do it during the hours where people are heading home for work. For instance, Melanie was going to join us, but yeah. she had to do well, we um, dinner. So we'll have right. to work on the timeline before we formally announce it. It's, it's, um, I'm good till, I mean, Central Standard Time, 9, 10 o'clock, you know, it makes it better. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's wrap this up. Yeah, I enjoyed it, and um, uh, it's very, very good discussion. And I do appreciate everybody's input. And I look forward to us doing this again real soon. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Cut. Ready. <laughs> all right. Signing off. Hey, just before everybody goes, you know, my nephew pinged me right away and said, uh, hey, I'm watching you live on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Oh, and it yeah. to and I said, what do you mean watching me live? Like, you mean I'm in my office, blue plaid shirt? And he said, yeah, that's in your beard. So, uh, so yeah, and, and he said <laughs> he could have contributed into the chat and everything if he wanted to. So that's what we're supposed to do. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Do it again. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Uh.